Welcome inside the coach's office for another edition of the Pikel Podcast presented by Horizon. Rutgers coming off a loss on Sunday to Maryland, three in a row, all different too. Two on the road at Minnesota, then at Purdue, and then of course the game uh, against Maryland. Coach, how are you? You know what? Um, it's that time of the year too, and uh, we got four left. We're excited about the four. We got two home and two away. Um, senior night two coming up. Uh, but we got to play better. You know, we were in a really good stretch, especially our defense. And then, you know, go on the road to Minnesota, score enough points. Our defense kind of lets us down a little bit. Obviously, you know, the Purdue game was just, you know, a tough, tough game. Uh, Purdue played great, tip of the hat to them. Uh, coming off a loss to Ohio State, probably the wrong time, <laughs> if I could pick a time. But we also are playing the second best schedule, too, in, in the league. So we're getting the iron, you know, all over the place. And then... Uh, you know, obviously a home game that we, you know, I really thought we could win Maryland. Um, I thought the last time we played outstanding defense for the whole time, and I thought our, our offense affected our defense in this game. And, and to Maryland's credit, we beat them down there. They beat us here. Um, we got to get, you know, bounce back. We got four left. We still have a lot to play for. I mean, it, it's, it's interesting. You know, the year Ron Harper was here, we finished that year with 18 wins. Like, we, we have 14 right now. We got five games that we know like we can get, and that was an NCAA tournament team. Uh, 18 wins was, was what that team had. And, and uh, you know, we can still do a lot with this season. You know, health has been a, a part of it, but we, we, we got a lot to play for. So I'm excited about that. We got to win our home games. Isn't that too a big part of this? Like there's still a big opportunity in front of you guys. You go win a couple of games and everything changes the way it just did a week ago. Uh -huh. The funny part is, is, you know, I talked to the Penn State coach last year at this time. Like, you know, they then they went on a run and obviously had a great year and he's now at Notre Dame. Uh, but, uh, you know, every year you have those stretches. Like, we can we can do some great things. We, we're right there in the mix, a game or two away from where we need to be. But you got to go on another winning streak. Um, put yourself in a really good position here, you know, with postseason coming up and all that. And the great part of playing in a league like this is, you know, you know, we've played the best teams, and, and uh, you go to that tournament, you got another opportunity there, too. So a lot of different ways to, you know, kind of do this thing, and, and, and you got to stay the course. Um, you got to continue to, you know, keep your guys focused, because I think this time of the year, so many things taken away their focus. Seniors are graduating, mm -hmm. thinking about moving on. Other guys are thinking about a lot of different things. Some guys are injured. Some So you got to get that focus back to, you know, it's just about winning that game. And if it's 53 to 52 and you win, if it's 81 to 80, you win. Just to focus on the team and doing what you need to do to win one game. And uh, that's how you kind of live. And that's how you live in the NCAA tournament, too. You got to win that one game to get to the next game. So, like, we're in that mode now and we got to do a really good job down the stretch here. When you came on with us post game, myself and Austin, the first thing you did was mention the fans coming out early game, noon on Sunday. It was fired up. Every a lot of people were in black like they were supposed to be. Then you went to the media. You opened your press conference thanking the fans. Why is that so important to you? You know what? I mean, it, it, it's been you know how we've moved this program forward. You know, the fans have been great, and a lot of them have been long-standing fans for a long time. You know, they're seeing a stretch here of of like really good basketball. Um, winning 80, 85 percent of our home games over the last five years, um, but they're always there too when we don't play well, and I'm real proud of that. Like, you know, these kids are great. We got the highest grade point average of. We've graduated every kid since they've been here. These kids represent the program the right way. You know, do they play great all the time? They, you know, like no one does. I don't know what team in the country does. You know, do that, and and, and so they're going to have those kind of ups and downs. But they're great Rutgers people, and I love the fact that our fans appreciate that, and, and they're positive with these guys. And you know, they live in a world now the phone sometimes isn't so positive. You know, so like if they get that from our fan, and 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 they're gonna work hard. They're gonna work hard. Even yesterday, stuff wasn't going. We, we subbed Austin in and Oscar. And we we could have cut that game to. Hey, we had a layup mm -hmm. at the end. Jeremiah got it blocked. You know, to cut it to eight with a ton of momentum, even though we didn't play great. But the fans really did a great job. And our guys kept fighting, you know, even though we weren't making shots. And I, I do think, too, that, you know, free throws and those kind of things, like, you know, just didn't go our way. So, like, the fans unbelievably appreciate so much what they do for our program. And I'm always trying to thank them. And that is, 
You know, I've been in arenas where no one's there. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, like, it, it makes a huge difference. Our players play better when the students are there and students are involved, and it's harder for the opponents. So, huge part of what we built here. All right, so four games to go. We still have a couple of home games, uh, obviously, including Michigan coming up on Thursday night, Ohio State, which we'll get to in just a moment, and in between a couple of road games. You want to win them all, and I understand that, but you can't win four before you win one. What is the biggest thing you're looking for from this group going forward? You know, like consistency, really. I mean, and we've had a great four-game stretch where we were the best defensive team in the country. So, um, you know, and especially on that end of the floor because you go through a season, some games the ball goes in. You know, Minnesota, you, you know, the ball went in a lot, but our defense kind of let us down. Against Wisconsin, we made a ton of threes. Like, that doesn't always happen, but your defense – has to be a consistency, and I want them to play for the program here. We got senior night coming up. Cliff is still in the running for defensive player of the year in the country. We're in the running for postseason play, another winning season. Like, there's so much to play for, but can I get them all focused on that? Being that's the most important thing, not individual stuff and not, you know, what's around the corner. And some of our seniors are leaving in their pro careers. And, you know, like, can I get them focused on what's important today? And, and that's always a hard thing to you know do, especially this day and age with all the distractions that they have. Yeah, there are a lot of them. Pico <laughs> Podcast presented by Horizon. We mentioned the Ohio State game, and that's going to be senior day. That'll be a big day. I know it's a little bit down the road, but you got to deal with it every year. What is it like as a coach when you see that day coming for a select few, or in this case, yeah. a good handful? A bunch of guys, and, and um, you know, it's a sad day. Um, all the growth that these guys have made. I think about Cliff leading the nation in fouls permitted as a freshman, and now he's up for National Defensive Player of the Year, and all the things he's gone through with their injuries and graduating, and you know how proud I, Andre comes here. Andre is a 3.9 grad school GPA, one of the elite students. We used to talk about Miles Johnson all the yeah. time. Like Andre Hyatt is more, you, you know, reserved and, and quiet. One of the greatest student athletes student athlete part that we've had here and has accepted every role this year. I mean, he's really been like awesome. And then Oscar comes back and always can count on him. One of the world-class team guys, like one of the world-class team, like he's truly one of those guys. He wants Rutgers, whether he plays, he's always ready when he doesn't play. He's always a great teammate. You know, I think Oscar's in that winner category that you know, everyone looks at stats and all that. That No, he does all these other things that, that matter to winning. You know, and then you got Noah, these guys that for the first time came, jumped on board, didn't know us, and been awesome to coach. Austin playing through draining his knee, you know, like every day, every week. And sometimes, coach, I can't play. And then, coach, I can play, and I'll give you all I have. And, you know, I've only had him for a year. I wish I had these guys for three or four years. That's not you know, the, the world that we live in, but Mawat Mag too, like his senior and his growth and not, he played behind, you know, Ron Harper Jr. and the, the battles every day and then he's starting and then he hits another obstacle with, you know, his knee and he fights through that and what he's given us and he's graduating. Like he, he had to work at school, like he did an unbelievable job doing what he needed to do academically. And then, you know, we have Aiden and Zach Hain who have been just awesome, like, you, you know, as, as, you know, our, our guys, like the dream team and practice and emulating the other school's best players, you know, and, and they just give such positivity. So you really miss these guys, and, 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 but you think about all the contributions that they've given us. And this has been the winningest time in Rutgers basketball history since the 70s. Mm. So these guys have played a huge role in that. And I'm going to miss them for that, and I'm very thankful that they stayed and had a lot of reasons so many more reasons now that everyone leaves. Yeah. These right. guys have stayed. They're it's all over the country. Yeah, they're truly Scarlet Knights. Last one as we wrap up uh, this edition of the Pikel Podcast. It amazes you how fast the season goes. It's like you kind of <laughs> talk to Chris about this, talk to Corey about this. It's like, you know, the season just kind of, you know, progresses in November. You get to the holidays and then, man, January hits and here you are. The weather's turning. The Big Ten tournament's right in front of you. And it's like, it goes like that. I tell the guys this all the time too. Like this is my 33rd year of coaching, I think. Like I remember the first year and it seemed like just yesterday, you know? And for the players too, I said like it, 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 it's over. And I said, that's why you gotta enjoy your teammates. You gotta enjoy your experience. Um, you know, you gotta enjoy being healthy because then there's gonna be times you're not healthy. And you know, you gotta enjoy the obstacles. and. 
I told Andre this is the last time you play at Purdue. Like Purdue's a tough environment to play at and you know, like, you know, think about that, you know, when he came, you had a lot of games at Purdue and now it's, and the freshmen become sophomores and next thing you know, they're seniors. Like it, it really is kind of scary how time flies, and especially when you're in the zone that we're in, we're going from one game to the next, you know how it is. You got to get the flight and, just, man, and then you land and then you got to, you know, like it's, it's just, um, you know, just keeps on moving. And that's why you got to enjoy the moment that you're in, enjoy the challenges because there's always challenges and, and get through the obstacles. A wise coach once told me, enjoy the journey because it goes and it's gone in a blink. So enjoy it. We're trying to do that right now. Uh, thank you for a few minutes. Big week because we've got Michigan coming up. Jersey Mike's Arena, 8.30 start on Thursday night. Don't forget about that. And then, of course, on the road for Nebraska over the weekend. Coach, thanks very much. Thanks, Jerry. Appreciate it. This has been another edition of the Pico Podcast presented by Horizon.